Hi, Dr. Lyons here, of course, and today I'm going to be making a graph of some data that I had laying around, and my experience with Excel is it does not generally provide the default formatting settings that would result in a attractive and useful engineering graph, and I'm going to be uh, just showing you how I go about creating the right format that I expect students to use in their reports. I'm going to show a couple of things here in my book uh, to sort of give you an idea of where we're going and you can see how Excel can approach that. So I've got my textbook here open to a page with a graph on it. Uh, there's two graphs here actually and just want to talk about some of the features that are in this graph that are important uh, to make a note of so that we can see how we can reproduce these in Excel. The Sorry, my phone doesn't focus real well on this, but we'll hopefully get through this. The graph has Y in meters plotted on the Y axis and T in seconds plotted along the X or horizontal axis. And there's a bunch of data points where Y was measured at different times. First thing to note is that the axes have labels and units, T representing time and S representing seconds, Y position M is the unit of meters. So that's one thing that Excel doesn't give you by default are actual labels on your axes. Second thing to notice is that the font size of the numbers on the axis and the labels on the axes are all the same. And uh, that's also a feature of Excel that um, you have to customize. Excel decides for you uh, arbitrarily what fonts and sizes you should use. And so we're going to talk about how to set Excel up to give us the same font everywhere. And another thing that you want to see in this particular chart is that each data point is discrete. There are no lines connecting of the, any of the data points. And for experimentally measured data, we will always represent the data points as discrete points with no lines. In other words, we are not making an assumption about what happens between the first data point and the second data point. We only have measurements at each individual time. And let's see, uh, another thing that you'll notice about this chart and or graph and other ones in engineering textbooks and reports is that there's a box all the way around the outside of the data set and that there are tick marks indicating where the, uh, I'm sorry, where the labels recorded on the axes. And there's no lines, grid lines going across like a, like a grid pattern. That's something Excel thinks that we want to have, but we really don't. So I'll show you how to remove those from Excel. And let's see, that's all I want to say about that particular chart. I've got another chart over here, and you can see some common features uh, again, we've got a Y and an X axis. The Y has both a label P and a unit in, uh, inches of mercury. And the X axis has a label and a unit. And the data points, which are the experiment in this graph, are symbols. It, it kind of looks like there is a line connecting these data points, but if you look closely, you'll see that some of the data points are slightly above that curve and some slightly below. And the curve in this particular chart is a theoretical relationship between the uh, P and Y variables. Yeah, because the theory is continuous, we know it at every point, so we have a solid line with no data points representing the theory. Uh, but the data points are discrete data points where it's labeled as experiment. The thing in the upper right hand corner is called a legend. You want the font size of the legend to also be the same size as the X and Y axis labels. I'm going to go over to the computer and let's get started. This is the data that I had lying around. Well, the first column is A, the, the position that I measured the, the reactions. And R1 is a force measurement, and R2 is a force measurement. As A ranged from 0 to 10, R1 ranged from uh, about 200 to almost 0, 196 to 2. And R2 has the opposite trend. It started off small and got bigger, and it ranged from 5 to 202. I'm going to put this data into Excel and then generate a chart. Now that I'm sitting at my computer, I'm going to open up Excel and 
I want to put some notes in here to remind myself, and this is the data from fall 19 for the ENCP 101 Excel video. And I've found that the easiest way to create the graph is to go ahead and set the data up so that it is in three columns. So my first column is going to be labeled A in inches. The second column is going to be labeled R1 in pounds. And the third column is going to be labeled R2 in pounds. R1 is the reaction force 1. R2 is the reaction force 2. And this is really just data input. And there we go. So now that I've got my input data, I'm going to create the chart. And I like to just go ahead and select the data range, including the labels at the top. Go to the top menu bar, insert, over to the charts. And I want to select this scatter chart, XY or bubble chart. Don't select the line chart because that doesn't scale the X axis according to the units select the XY chart. And since I'm plotting experimental data, I'm going to select the symbols with no um, lines connecting the symbols. Now, uh, this chart needs a lot of work. Um, I can get part of the way with this quick layout using this layout one, because you see that brings in the areas for the axis titles, and it puts the legend over to the right where I like to see it. And it automatically pulls in the column headings R1 and R2 because I selected that entire range for my data set. So that's kind of nice that Excel knows that the first column is going to be plotted on the X axis, and the subsequent columns will be plotted on the Y axis. Uh, the, the charts in the engineering reports don't have titles on the top. You might use that for a PowerPoint presentation, but not for something in print. My X title I need to change to Reaction Forces. And the units on these are in pounds. Don't press Enter because that puts a funny space in there. My X axis title, I just know it's A in inches. For the remainder of the editing, I like to throw this into its own page because if I resize this here in the spreadsheet, it gets, can get kind of wonky and I want all my charts to look, be the same general aspect ratio. So I'm going to move this chart into its own sheet, new sheet chart one. A couple of things I need to do. Uh, the first is the font size is too small. So if I select the entire chart area, so then if I go to the home menu, I can change the font size on everything at once to 20. You'll see why that's a good size. Basically, I'm going to be later shrinking this into a chart and I want the font to be readable. I'm going to have to work on my scales right here. First of all, I don't want this uh, X axis to go from 0 to 12. I want it to go from 0 to 10. So if I select the axis and then press the right mouse button, I can go to the axis format and I'm going to change the bounds from a minimum of 0 to a maximum of 10. That's going to stretch my data out a little bit better. And likewise for the Y axis, I need to format that axis. I don't like that what Excel wanted. I wanted that go up to 200. So now my data is starting to fill up the whole graph. Where did that go? Hmm. 200 didn't work, did it? Because the last data point on the re reaction 2 went up to 206, I guess it was. So if I just change that to 220, it gives me numbers. So I make that 0. And I guess that's going to work. This still looks kind of wonky, so what I need to do is select the plot area and come over to the borders and change that to a solid border. I'm going to make that black. Um, Excel thinks that my axes should be gray, so I need to change those to black. And I don't know why it would be gray. I need to change this axis also to black, selecting the paint bucket and the color to black, starting to look a little bit better. I don't want these crossbars in them, these grid lines. So I'm going to select them and then press the delete key. That will remove them. 
But now I need tick marks on my axes, so I'll go back to the Y axis, format axis, and down here on, uh, towards the bottom there's tick marks, and I want major tick marks on the inside, and I'm going to the X axis, format axis, that is under the, the thing that, that looks like three bars, tick marks inside. And the circles are going to just all be black and black if I print this on a black and white printer. So I'm going to need to change my symbols. Uh, so I select them, either select Format Data Series right here, or when I just select them, Format Data Series pops up over here on the right. So we'll go to the bucket, and I'll go to the marker function, marker options. I need to change one of these. Uh, to some symbol besides circles because they're both circles. So I'm going to select a square. I'm going to make that about size 10. And I'm going to change the uh, border color to black and the fill color to black. And now I'm going to series 2, format that data series. Marker, marker options, uh, the type is OK. Change that size to 10. Change the fill color to black and the border color to black. I've got my axes labeled. Font size is uniform throughout. No grid lines, but there are tick marks. Labels for the legend appear on the right. Now I better save this. Now, what I found the best way to put this into a Word document is to select the chart, right-click, copy, open up Word, and let me show you what happens when you just paste it in with the destination theme. And if I try to make it smaller, it gets pretty wonky. But if I paste it in as a picture, where'd it go? Oh, it's a little bit larger. But here, when I resize the picture, it scales everything and uh, at the same time, and it doesn't get so wonky as you might if you uh, paste it into some sort of Excel function. This is always going to stay proportional unless I do something silly like grab the edge of it. And if you do mess everything up, you can always click the undo button up here and gets it back to the format that you want. And that is how you use Excel to make an engineering graph with an acceptable format.